You know, this might actually be Qualcomm's most important Snapdragon Summit, like ever. See, I've been coming to Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit since 2017. Each year we got to see the company's latest chips, but uh, when it came to mobile, everything was mostly incremental. New architectures, standard ARM cores, and some unique design that pushed power and efficiency, but nothing really bold or crazy. All while Apple was just owning chip innovation with its custom Apple Silicon cores. Seriously, for the last couple of years, Apple had been at least two to three generations ahead and not stopping. I'd say it wasn't until Qualcomm announced its Orion CPU with its Snapdragon X Elite that things didn't just change, but the company was able to leapfrog the market with custom cores that were more powerful than anything else out there. But then again, for computers. We urgently needed this approach for smartphones, and let's just say this is what this event has been all about. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's do a deep dive over the top five reasons why you should care about the new Snapdragon 8 Elite. So yes, we have a new name for the chip, which I feel was the right move. This is not an 8 Gen 4 in any way. This chip has absolutely no similarities to the past architecture. Think of this as a paradigm shift for the industry because we're not just talking about an updated design. This is a new chip from the ground up with a second generation of that Orion CPU and the improvements are more focused on things that benefit mobile. So let me walk you through five reasons why you should care. The first is power and efficiency. The Snapdragon 8 Elite is a pretty big leap in processing power. Qualcomm's second generation Orion CPU introduces a custom eight core structure that's pretty unique. We have two prime cores clocked at a whopping 4.32 gigahertz and six performance cores running at 3.53 gigahertz. Notice there are no efficiency cores. And yes, I know MediaTek started this trend last year with its Dimensity 9300. But what makes the Snapdragon unique is that that these are not just ARM cores. This is all Orion. Qualcomm claims that you can do all the gaming, video editing, or intensive multitasking at 44% less power than before. And guys, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 was already legendary at endurance. One of the major reasons why is because this 8 Elite is built on TSMC's new 3 nanometer process, which we know as N3E. I know Apple did 3 nanometers first with its A17 Pro, but that N3B node was not as efficient as this one, which we now see on Apple's M4 and the A18 series of chips. And 3E has far better yield and efficiency match with all that power. Qualcomm claims this chip finally beats Apple Silicon's A18 Pro in benchmarks, so you bet I cannot wait for this competition to go head to head. Obviously, yes, I know what your next question is. So for the second reason, let's talk about this new Adreno GPU. Qualcomm has overhauled it and by a lot, delivering a staggering 40% improvement in both performance and power savings compared to the previous model. A lot of it has to do with Qualcomm's new approach to the design, which is now in its sliced architecture. Think of it as having three GPUs working in tandem to build out the performance and scale for all that demand. As a result, the chipset introduces ray tracing technology for your games, which I know we sort of had, but not at this level. Another major standout feature of the Snapdragon 8 Elite is its support for Unreal Engine 5.3, along with the Nanite virtualized geometry system. This means mobile games will look better than ever before with highly detailed environments, complex 3D models, and smooth animation. Qualcomm claims this level of graphical fidelity is first in mobile devices, closing the gap between console and mobile gaming experiences. Third is connectivity, which Qualcomm actually spent little time on, but I also feel is a major change. We got to see Qualcomm's new X80 5G modem, which supports 6X carrier aggregation, allowing for peak download speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second and theoretical upload speeds of up to 3.5 gigabits per second. Yes, all these numbers sound extreme, and all we are waiting for now is for US carriers to deliver because Qualcomm has been way ahead in providing the 5G technology technology we just have not seen carriers live up to. Beyond just 5G, the Snapdragon 8 Elite also introduces the FastConnect 7900 mobile connectivity system. This is the first mobile chipset to integrate Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and ultra-wideband technology on a single 6 nanometer chip, meaning less space taken to provide all this technology. 
Fourth is obviously photography and videography, which have become defining features for smartphones for the past, I don't know, what, decade? The Snapdragon 8 Elite introduces an enhanced Spectra ISP that works hand in hand with the new Exagon NPU. The result is what Qualcomm calls their new set of AI ISPs because yes, these are three, reducing shutter lag by 33%. We're talking capabilities of recording from three 48 megapixel cameras at 30 frames per second, all simultaneously with zero shutter lag. This also means limitless segmentation even when video recording, AI portrait video lighting, skin tone and sky adaptation in real time, and more. This new AI ISP works harder at improving what Qualcomm calls the three A's, autofocus, auto exposure, and auto white balance, improving photography across the board. We also saw how it allows for features like real-time video object eraser and photo segmentation, meaning you can remove unwanted elements from your shots instantly, and again, even on video. Maybe my favorite part was seeing how Qualcomm worked with both Sony and Samsung to tailor this chip to the latest camera sensors. So yeah, that's more stuff that I'm looking forward to. Last but not least, and fifth, is obviously AI, as this is no longer just a buzzword in the tech world. Qualcomm wants to make it not just nice to have, but so useful you won't imagine a life without it. With the Snapdragon 8 Elite, Qualcomm has integrated its AI engine with multimodal Gen AI support. This means that the chip can run complex AI models faster and more efficiently than before. The Hexagon NPU ensures AI tasks run 45% faster, all while using less power, which is important for battery life. This upgrade is so significant for several reasons. First is all the improvements in photography that we already discussed. Second is how AI enhances the performance of voice assistants and on-device machine learning, making interaction smoother and faster. I actually found the company's claims of its agentic nature to be what's most important. We actually saw MediaTek also discuss this with its Dimensity 9400 that launched two weeks ago. This whole concept that these assistants will become AI agents that are capable of actually doing stuff for us and help us skim through lots of data and smart decision making is pretty cool. Like seriously, think about it. If this is stuff you want, you're gonna want the fastest chip in the market on your next phone. To conclude, can I just say that this is probably the best Snapdragon Summit that I've participated in. This was less incremental iteration and more of the kind of innovation we've been asking for for a bit. It's crazy how all companies are now working on increasing compute power and improving efficiency in ways we hadn't seen before. And clearly the way to go was to invest in custom architectures. The Snapdragon X Elite proved that it could be done on an ecosystem as complex as Windows. So just imagine a more powerful 8 Elite doing so for Android. Guys, seriously, this is not even a sponsored video. I truly am excited for where chips are going more than I've ever been for years. Xiaomi is set to be first with its 15 series, and we also got to see Honor and Asus showing off what's next. So stay tuned because this holiday season, meaning yes, in 2024, is about to get real. Let me know what you think of this new launch in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me go crazy over a chip more than ever. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.